We are going to count the police commissioners or bosses from independence up to now. When Kenya attained independence, the police commissioner was called Sir Richard Catlin. Sir Richard Catlin. In 1964, the then president, Mzee Jomo Kenyatta, and the then vice president, Adonigo Abednego Oginga Odinga, a.k.a. Jaramogi, they sat down and decided that if most of these sensitive uh, departments beheaded either by Akikuyu and deputized by Aluo or vice versa. Uh, later on, if you look at all departments holistically held and especially the police, Walichezwa. Walichezwa. You'll find that uh, this story Yarigiji saying shareholders and uh, the the governor of Nyeri he did not start today. <laughs> that time it was decided that uh, every department it, it half beheaded or well, let's say 40% beheaded by Luos, deputized by Kikuyus, and 40% uh, be vice versa. And then the remaining 20% here, yeah, the others. But then, Puaguna Puaguzi, a thief and a robber. So it ended uh, most departments, especially the police, Walichezwa. So in 1964, Bernard Njenga Hinga was made the Commission of Police. He was the director of Special Branch. He was the director of Special Branch, but uh, he was promoted to be the Commission of Police. He was deputized by a Luo called Michael Arum. He was deputized by Michael Arum, and he took over in 1964. He continued being the Commission of Police until 1978 he continued being the commissioner of police until 1978 and you know in 1978 uh by the, the, the time he t he left moi was the president actually he was among the first people whom moi chased away if i if i may use that word uh what happened was um moi no, Kenyatta, Jomo Kenyatta, used, just like Kibaki once said when he was in the opposition, that when Kenyatta gave you a job, he did not microfinance it. But Moi being the president, he was the minister for everything. Yours was only the ceremonial head. So, I want to just give two examples when Hinka was the commissioner of police. Uh, those days... You know, you, you, today you go to any trading center, you find boys playing pool. Those days, pools were being played by very senior people. And the number of pool tables in Kenya would be counted. So there is this uh, Nairobi club where Hinka was playing uh, pool. Jomo Kenyatta went and found him playing pool. And uh, there was an issue about uh, a security issue somewhere. So Kenyatta told him, you're playing pool here and there is a... He told him, no, I've sent competent officers there. And uh, Mweshi, uh, uh, Mutukufu, those days they used to use, use the word Mutukufu. Mutukufu rise, I'm sure, within hours, solution will be found because the officers that I took there are very competent. And Kenyatta said, you see, that is your department. If it fails, that's up to you. That is how Jomo Kenyatta used to operate. And Moi, he used to make many decisions, all decisions in all departments. If you are the head of that department, it was only for you to announce what Moi has told you. Say, I have decided. But when you say, I have decided, it is Moi has decided. 
So when Kenyatta died, uh, Moi called uh, Hinga to State House. He called Hinga to State House and told him uh, there was an argument there. And then uh, Hinga told him, I am the commissioner of police and I've done this work for quite some time. Just let me, you have given me a job, let me do my job. You wake a state house. Uh, and then he said, even the officer have assigned that duty. He's very competent and I don't want to be seen to be interfering in that. He said, yeah. What the boy told him? Okay, bus Rudiko of Siako. When Hinga heard that, he went, and you see it was a heated, uh, what do you call, argument, because Hinga was annoyed because he was doing what he's, he's supposed to do professionally. I wanted to use the word professional. So Hinga left, went to police headquarters. Upon entering his office, he did not even check the door. He did not even check the door, because at the door usually it is written so-and-so, commission of police. He didn't check the door. He just entered and went to his desk. Whom did he find seated on his desk? It was Ben Gethi. Ben Gethi dressed like an anini. I almost said in Inspector General. Ben Gethi dressed like uh, a commissioner of police. So here were two officers in the same office, in the same rank. That is how Ben Gethi became the commissioner. He had previously been the GSU commandant. So from there, he was made the, he was made the commissioner. You can see where the 2010 constitution took us because the people, people only remember the vice president being sacked or appointed by roadside. You can see somebody in charge of security the whole country going to his office and discovering that he is no longer the commissioner of police. Ben Gethi served that department. And uh, I tend to believe Ben Gethi did not participate in the 82 coup. Actually, they even called him. Uh, when, people are <laughs> when decisions were being made to when decisions were being made to arrest those people suspected to be in the August coup of 1982, he's the one who used to call a press conference and read it. And just like uh, Moe's time, you'd be given a list to read, and when you read at the end of the list, you find your name there. So Gethi uh, found himself that way. He was replaced by Bernard Njinu. Bernard Njinu was a career presidential escort commander. Over 80% of his time, over 80% of his time was spent when he was uh, at the presidential escort. And you see, if you are the presidential escort commander, the president regularly calls you. For example, the president will just call the presidential commander, presidential escort commander and say, I've decided to go to Nyahururu. So the, <laughs> the presidential escort commander has very little time to do what? The presidential escort commander has very little time to organize on how uh, security will be laid from state house to wherever the president is going and back. So he went and called his gazetted officers and said, Muzea Menita, I'm supposed to... Can you be on standby? He may live in a short, eh? short notice, eh? so he went there. When he met the president, the president told him that um, I've decided that you are going to be the next commission of police. Uh, the last episode I talked on how a lawyer went to see the president Jomo Kenyatta, and he was told you are now the, uh, you are now the. Uh, Chief Justice. Now this one had told his uh, gazetted officers, be ready if the president may be going uh, left or right, uh, be ready to, and, and try to call uh, Askari Zawar Tiarikwen. So when Njinu went there, he was told, I have decided that you are going to be the commissioner of police. Do you accept the appointment? 
uh, I don't know of anybody who has refused a promotion. And not, not even that. If you refuse, you see where you are coming from, the position has been taken. Where you are going, if you refuse, then it means you are retiring yourself. So Njinu accepted to be the commissioner of police. Just at that moment when he had accepted that he was going to be the commissioner of police, Moi took a hot hotline. Those are telephones which were very secure. He rang to the commissioner of prisons and told him that once Gethi go, uh, arrives at committee, tell me. And the minute that Gethi was in committee, was arriving in committee, that is the minute that Bernard Njinu was being sworn in as the commissioner of police. I said he was under commission of police until January 1988. If you look at the commissioners, Hinga, Gethi, Jindu is the first police commissioner to honorably retire. Then in uh, January 1988, he handed over to Philip Kilonzo. Philip Mule Kilonzo. He didn't like handing it over to Philip Mule Kilonzo because he didn't like handing it over to Philip Mule Kilonzo because he has even said it and I've heard him say that uh, although Kilonzo is the first and I think so far the only police officer who has Boinet, 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 Boinet is a special SOIP, like me, special, so you cannot say he's a bootman. Special SOIP are cadets of a, of a special nature. So I can say Kilonzo is the only person so far who started as a recruit and ended up the highest rank. But then Njinu was, was retiring and uh, the president, the commander-in-chief had appointed Philip Kilonzo but in him he was not happy because Kilonzo, when he was a corporal, he was to be, he was interdicted and he was about to be sacked. He was about to be sacked, I'll say that. So he was, Nani was not happy about it because he wanted a, a, the, whoever becomes the police boss be a person of the highest discipline. But here you are, somebody is being appointed who had already it shows a bad picture. So in January 1988, Philip Mule Kilonzo became the commissioner. And uh, the principal, you see the principal deputy to, you know, police in Kipanuka, there are so many positions which were being created. So the principal deputy to Bernard Njinu was Musau. And when Philip Mule Kilonzo was a corporal and he was interdicted. He was working, he was an instructor in Kiganjo. He rushed to Musau. Musau then was an OCPD and said, Wakuito Ndavie, eh? And Musau assisted. He told him, you are not only, I'm, I'm going to talk to Gazette officers in Kiganjo and your disciplinary action will not be taken. Not only will that be not be taken, but you are going for an inspector's course. So here you are, and that is why military people like Tonje's rule. Here is somebody you assisted to become an inspector, and he's your immediate boss. So one day, uh, Musau got and got drunk. <laughs> And you see, Moi had planted spice everywhere. So Musa was immediately told to retire. Mule Kilon Philip Mule Kilonzo was a, a commissioner until 1993, uh, 88 to 1993, one of the worst time in Kenya's history. But he retired. And later on, they followed him and killed him. Uh, 1993, he handed over to Shadra Kiruki. Shadra Kiruki, uh, he's the first CID person to head. He headed 1993. He was my teacher. He was my teacher in Kiganjo. 
he's, he's, uh, so, so he was the deputy commandant, if you want to call it deputy principal. He was the deputy commandant when I was uh, attending my inspector's course. I was there from 1993 to 1996. He was a saved person. He was a saved person. He's somebody who who brought into the police what is called CPA, Christian Police Association. Uh, that is when you find we have police officers. Uh, he introduces you, himself to you as a corporal bishop, so and so. And uh, he, had, he played a very good role. Only thing I can say is that uh, <clears throat> apart from Mutiambai, intelligence officers have made very good police bosses. But CID, Bure Kabisa. The reason why he, he, he had an early retirement is that uh, there was a demonstration in Kenyatta University and a student was shot dead. Then Duncan Washira, who was then the PPO of the Eastern Province, was made the Commissioner of Police in 1996 to 1998. Duncan Washira used to work under my father, Mr. Lando. Uh, Duncan Washira was the PPO Western uh, Regional Police Commission, Regional Police Boss uh, Western Province. And then he was removed from police. He was taken to the ministry. And from the ministry, he was taken to Northeastern. He met my father when he was heading to Northeastern. He wanted to resign. You see, those days you, you are PPO. The PPO Northeastern was of the same rank as Deputy PPO Kakamega. So, <laughs> being transferred from Western to Northeastern, instead of the reverse, he wanted to resign. But, uh, or have an early retirement. My father told him, uh uh, just Vumilia. And he vomiliad and he became the commissioner in 1996 until 1998 when he retired on age ground. Very few police bosses retire honorably. Then, um, 1998, Philomen Abong took over and he continued until 2002. Uh, 2002, is it 2003? He left work. Now, he left work because he was so much promoy. When NAC came, they didn't want him, and so he had to go. And here is the trick. Here is the trick. The then director of operations, uh, the police headquarters, was Edwin Nyaseda. My law instructor in Kiganjo. At the time when I was attending inspector's course, he was under Shadra Kiruki by a few ranks. Now he was made the commissioner of police. To be very sincere, na hii trick ya wa wawili, mountain and lake. You remember when I started by saying, uh, I was talking of this thing about uh, Luo and Kikuyu, Luo and Kikuyu. If you ask me, Nyaseda should have been made the director of CID. But while well, they had somebody in the CID whom they wanted, they, 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 it's a Dr. Kamau. Yeah, the Dr. Kamau. So they wanted Kamau to go there. If Nyaseda would have been made the director of CID, I tell you. <laughs> anyway, so Nyaseda was the commissioner of police between 2002 to 2003. That is when a military man, Mohammed Hussein Ali, was called. He, he, Nyaseda was there just within a year. Nyaseda was, he did not even complete a year. So Mohammed Hussein Ali, a military person, was called. And he was called, he was told just, I think the army commander may have known, or should have known. Anyway, Hussein was just called to the set house. He didn't know what he was being called. He was told to dress in ceremonial number one. He went there and he was told, uh, we have had a problem with the police. Ukabila, tribalism. Now, if you want to find tribalism in the police, it is not tribalism the way you hear it at tribalism. Uh -uh. Formationalism. Formationalism. You find that uh, when Gezi became the commissioner of police every promotion 
promotion through the rank of superintendent. Every class, the class used to have 25 students. 15 were from GSU and 10 was from the other formations. So you find that if you place there a GSU officer promotes GSU people. You place there a CID officer, he promotes CID people. So why can't we bring a person who is... Uh, you see, when, 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 when I'm the police boss, I take Onyango, promote him. I take Kamau, promote him. I take Hussein, promote him. I, I, people say, hey, we are going to promote Kabila Zote. But if you look at it, these are people we used to work with. These are people who are from my formation. So the tri that is tribalism in another way, but it, I call it for, men, for, for, for ma, uh, formationalism. Formationalism. So you, Ali came, and Ali, although he served for a very long time, from the, th from the year 2003 to 2009, the problem with Ali is that um, he came with a military background. It's a long story. In the military, anybody one rank ahead of you, you don't question that person. Uh, he went and said he has sacked some gazetted officers. There are cases which even whatever happened. But I can say, although he stayed for a long time, he failed because of Madam Alice Kagunda. Alice Kagunda was his principal assistant. And you see, you, you did appoint her, isn't it? And appointed an outsider. And you want me to do the donkey work I did us. So Hussein Ali retired. But uh, I don't think he knew he was retiring because Matthew Sitere, who was then the head of the presidential uh, escort, was uh, he just came and uh, Ali was not uh, aware but handed over. Itere did it well. Itere, Itere <laughs> we were in college almost the same time. You see the Kiganjo, there used to be three classrooms, 75 students, uh, 25, 25, 25. So there were three direct entry cadets, but when direct entry cadet cl class one went away, class one and class two, uh, special one and two, we came in. So you find that uh, direct entry class three, usually whenever we meet, we say, but Itere left Kiganjo a fortnight before I arrived there. He was a very good person, but uh, he saw that, uh, you, you, you know, being the head of police uh, for those years, it uh, being a head of police for four years uh, is a long time, so he decided just to have a, a hundred more retire. And next time they have National Police Service uh, Commission, I think he's the right person to be made a commissioner there. That is now when... The new constitution, that is 2012, came up with a new arrangement. On one side, the arrangement was for the inspector general, who was now in overall, including AP. And on the other side, there was the deputy inspector general in, in charge of general duties, as you call it, regular police. Uh, Anzia Jew. Nita Anzia Jew, the first inspector general was... Uh, David, Kim, David Mole Kimayo between 2012 and 2015. He, uh, the person who took over was Joe uh, Kipchir Chirboinet from 2015 to 2019 and he handed over to the worst police boss ever, uh, Mutiambai, who was there from, uh, 19, uh, from 2019 to 2022. Koome is there continuing. But to me, Kome behaves more like a GSU commander. On the level of Deputy Inspector General, the first one was Grace Kaindi, who took over from, 12, uh, for, from 2013 to 2015. She is the one and only senior policewoman who has been there to date. Uh, she handed over to Joel Kitili from 2015 to 2018. 2018 is when Edward Mbogwa took it and um, he has handed over to somebody. I think I'll, I'll write that one in the comment section. Uh, my neck top <laughs> in a jar, in a jar. Nini. But then uh, that is the history of police, uh, police bosses from independence 
up to today. Thank you.